swung it back this way. And then as I swung through, I, I think I think I might have caught a crampon or something on the way through. Or I can get, yeah, a pretty crampon, I think, on top of my boot or something. And as I released it, there was this like... <laughs> Let me set the scene. Um, yeah, 75 people, uh, kids and leaders and guides. So I think there was 75 kids, or 60, 60 odd kids and 15 guides. Um, some guys responsible for science, some of them were more responsible for the adventure side of things. And we were living on this beach. I don't know whether you even know, I mean, some of you guys might not know where Svalbard is. It's an archipelago, a uh, Norwegian archipelago, uh, about 78 degrees north, due north of Norway, right? And beautiful. The capital's Longyearbyen. It's um, 3,000 people live there. Um, it's, it's really, it's home to the seed bank. Uh, so, you know, on the, just outside Longyearbyen, the main capital city, is this hill. And in the side of the hill is, is literally just a doorway. It's, it's a door, like, like your front door. The doorway goes into the mountain. And, uh, you know, you pull the door open and you enter the world's largest seed bank where, uh, where seeds from every single species of plant on the world in the in the world are stored. Uh, so it's pretty remarkable uh, as a as a location. It's obviously there's lots of tourism there. People go there to see the Northern Lights, to see polar bears. Um, and anyway, this expedition we were uh, again. It was all about youth development, leadership skills. We were there doing like retake photography again in Svalbard. Um, we were doing studies. Um, around heat exchange and teaching the kids how to climb glass, ice climb and survive in the Arctic. It's pretty ex pretty extreme, really, for to take you know 16 to 21 year olds from a you know UK environment and, and into the Arctic. You know, there's lots of training going on beforehand. It's you know, and so the anticipation, the excitement, the you know, the, the almost the nerves of getting there is phenomenal. And. Uh, we finally got, got to Longy Burn. We then get on a boat and we have effectively a, almost a day's boat journey um, to, get to, to deliver us onto the beachfront where we were setting up our, our base camp. And um, base camp was literally just a, a big flat beach where we could put up, um, you know, uh, probably 30 odd tents um, by the time you've got all the leaders' tents and the mess tents and things. Uh, all in rows for polar bear protection and stuff like that. Um, and obviously all of the loots. And like going to the loot, one of the beautiful things, one of the most beautiful things about adventure, and one of the things I love is that it doesn't matter like, you know, what watch you're wearing. It doesn't matter how big your wallet is, what car you drive. Doesn't matter because uh, you all poo in the same bucket, right? You're all exactly the same. You know, there's no differentiating. There's no like, oh, I can afford the taxi. You can't. You're walking. I'm going to get home five hours before you. None of it, because you know everyone's just the same, and it's a, it creates a beautiful dynamic within within a team. But another story. And um, so we were, you know, all pooing in the same bucket. And what the Svalbard authorities told us to do, because we're totally remote. You know, there's no sewage works. There's no like electricity, running water like a tap where you just turn the water on fill up or like you know nothing it's it's literally just a beach and we were living on the beach and we we brought in all of our freeze-dried food and so needless to say there's like 75 people all pooing right every day uh it's kind of a fact like you know some some people were pooing twice a day and it came to me to empty the loot like you know I, Guide, leader, whatever. Okay, it's, it's uh, you know, we've got to maybe lead by example. And it was quite early on in the trip. I was probably like, probably four, five days in um, to what was a, what's going to be uh, an eight-week trip. So quite early on, actually, you know, wearing your fresh kit, feeling like, you know, just sort of getting stuck in, just settling into beach life. And um, anyway, the Svalbard authorities had told us that we uh, should take our poo bags, our biodegradable poo bags, and um, throw them into the fjord. Um, you know, just like 10 yards off the shore, and then throw stones at them to sink it. And then it would sink and biodegrade at the bottom of the ocean. So it wouldn't like float off and, you know, all go everywhere. Not that, you know, we, not, not that it would really. Uh, anyway, but that's what they wanted us to do. And so my turn came, it was probably like one of the first few times we had to do this emptying, you know, 
ritual of like throwing stone or throwing it into the into the ten yards off the shore, throwing the throwing stones and sinking. So there was quite a crowd developing, you know, quite a lot of excitement. Everyone's like, "Oh my god, it's George's turn!" You know, just come and watch the poo the, the, the poo bag disappear. And um, so I limbered up, you know, quite quite excited about this. Made sure the knot was firmly tied. And um, anyway, sort of you know, stood next to it, but like I was going to do a golf shot. Swung it back this way, and then as I swung through, I, I think I think I might caught a crampon or something on the way through, or I, yeah, pretty crampon I think on top of my boot or something. And as I released it, there was this like sort of rainbow that formed in front of me, and like the onshore breeze just pushed this poo rainbow like kind of back onto my face. <laughs> So, <laughs> so that was day four of an eight-week project of a eight day, of a eight-week uh, expedition covered in poo, which is perfect. <laughs> and not great access to the showers out there. Uh, there were no showers. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that clip, and if you did, please feel free to subscribe to the show because we have some incredible stories to tell.